Hey friend, welcome back to Bible Tract Echoes. I'm Michael McCurry, your host. Thank you so very much for taking of your time and joining me right here today. Our family, our ministry, we love young people. We love investing in young people. I got the opportunity to be a youth pastor of my first ministry position in full-time ministry. Now in evangelism, I get to be a part of a massive number of summer camps, get to lead singing at camps, preach at camps. I get to be a director at, at a camp and camp evangelist at others. It's an amazing thing. Our kids, my girls, Emmy and Lucy, they go to camp with us. We have a great time. But today, on the broadcast, I'm going to be bringing you the final installment of a message that I preached a year ago at camp. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to listen in to tune your ears. But before we do so, I've got to give you a little bit of context. Now, these young people, they do a phenomenal job. The camp staff at this camp where I preached this message at Common Ground Baptist Camp in Butler, Pennsylvania, the camp staff there is phenomenal. Love them. And the teenagers that make up the camp staff do a great job. They were part of a, uh, call it a skit, a performance. I got to be a part of it as well. I was kind of the narrator to some degree. And this particular, by way of context, because I will reference it in the message in a moment, this particular, I guess you'd call it a skit, there wasn't really anything funny about it, it was sobering, but this particular skit was set up such that there were people, young people, dressed in the garb of different countries. And maybe the first one was uh, an Emily from the Ukraine, and she was actually a young lady that could speak with a good Ukrainian accent, and she came to the microphone and, and said, my name is Emily. I'm lost. I don't know what I'll do. Each of them had chains on them. They were bound up in sin and talked about how they didn't know which end was up. They didn't know about God. And the auctioneer would ask, I was the auctioneer really, I would ask, is there anyone that will go to Emily in Ukraine that will tell her of the love of Jesus? And a missionary in the crowd would stand and say, I will go and I will reach that young lost soul. And then another from uh, from Colombia would come and then another, another from another nation would come and a missionary in turn would say, I will go reach them. And then it ended with a young lady, Abby from Ireland. Now I don't do a good Irish accent, but she did. And she said, my name is Abby. And who will go, I asked, who will go to reach her? But what I've left out is that Satan, a man playing Satan, the devil, he would bid on every soul, but he was outbid by the missionary. Well, no one stood for Abby. No one stood to claim her. And so he led her away in chains. And this young lady, wonderful, wonderful actress, she screamed. She cried. She wondered, why won't someone come for me? Sobering thought. And I had the privilege of preaching after that. Friend, I'd ask you, will anyone bid on this soul? I, I hope maybe you'll consider that today as we conclude this message on letting go and letting God. Can I encourage you to let go of what's in your hands? Can I encourage you to let go of what's in your hands and to let go of your plans? You know, for sake of time, we won't go there. You remember how Abraham was told by God to sacrifice his, one, his only son, Isaac? Do you remember that? And they strap the wood on them. They leave those men behind and they're trudging up there. And Isaac said, I see the wood, I see the fire, but I don't see the lamb. And what does Abraham say? God will provide. I'm so glad God provides me. You know what? That was a statement by faith because Abraham didn't know what was coming. He raised that knife in full anticipation that he must obey what God wanted him to do. Can I tell you, that was not, I cannot imagine that the first time he held Isaac in his hands, that that occurrence was in Abraham's plans. What's in your plans? But let me ask this, what would upset your plans so much? that you would deviate from the course that God has given you. Can I tell you, God's plans don't always match the plans that we have. In actuality, they very rarely match our plans. But for many of you, you've already experienced that in life. You've already had a hard circumstance that you feel like was unearned and unjust, and therefore 
You don't need to follow his plans anymore. Can I encourage you to let go of your plans, to let go of what is in your hands? You know, Isaiah 41, verse number 10 says this, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You can always trust his hands. You can always trust his plans. The question is, why would you not? not trust his plans. Is it for cash? Are you so easily bought that money is all it will take for you to change your plans? Is it connections? Peer pressure is uh, the crowd can cause many a Christian's plans to flounder and falter. Is it the condition of the world? Is it convenience and comfort? It may, there may be no more dangerous, no more insidious thing that the devil has at his disposal than convenience and comfort. All it takes is the AC to go out for a little while and we start getting a little hot under the collar literally and emotionally. It was over in Burma, Southeast Asia, back in December. December. It barely got below 80 the entire time. I'm standing there preaching. They get four hours of power a day, if that. And I hear the fan behind me go, And all of a sudden, this oppressive humidity goes. Whoop. And I'm standing there thinking, I am three minutes into a 30-minute message. Here we go. Comfort. Is that all it's going to take to keep you in lockstep with the devil's plans? He can look so respectable, can't he, Brother Rickner? He can look so very easy to get along with. See, here's the thing. We, we, we sped up the, 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 the time frame with that little skit. You see, most of the time, Abby would have gone willingly for about 20 or 30 or 40 years. Maybe the rest of her life, the screaming would have occurred when she entered hell. But until then, she would have lived very comfortably in Ireland. And you will live here very comfortably while God pounds on the door of your heart saying, will you go to Abbey? But for convenience, you will sell out God's plans. For comfort, you'll sell out God's plans. For carnality, you will sell out God's plans. For compromise, there is no compromise with the devil. I don't know how to tell you, but when the Bible says, neither give place to the devil, that means nothing. That word in the Greek, I don't get into it often, but it means, it, it, the word is topos, where we get topography from. Literally ground. Neither give ground place. Remember that, are we allowed to, is, is remember the Titans long enough for back that we can quote it in, in, a, in a message? Don't give them a, another yard. Heard a wiser man than I say when asked this question, what battles do we fight as, as ministers of God? Which battles do we fight? They were, he was talking about, you know, COVID and shutting down the churches and all that type of stuff. And the man astutely said this, preacher for many years, he said this, if the battle is for truth, if the battle is for God's bride, the church, we fight every battle. Amen. There's not a one that's not worth the Christian soldier strapping up one more time and saying, no, no, devil, you're getting no place here. Compromise? No. You can't sell out God's plans for that. Carnality, no. You can't sell out God's plans for that. Would you go to Jeremiah 29 as we conclude? Jeremiah chapter number 29. And verse number 11. 
For I know, of course, this is God talking to his people, but I believe the biblical principle is still secure. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, may I tell you, there are some of you right now in here that think that you have ruined your life already to the place that you can't be used of God. Do you know how these GPSs work these days? When you drive by and miss your exit, you know what they do? Recalculating. Recalculating. Now, some of you, you might have shut off that little voice. You so drowned out the still small voice But you know, under the pillow that you're trying to muffle the Spirit of God with? Recalculating. Recalculating. And maybe you're about 15 exits down past where you're supposed to be. But if you've got a pulse, God's still got a purpose for your life. And if you just let go of the peanuts that are in your hands, if you let go of what's keeping you from doing God's plans, maybe you can jump on the next exit, flip a Yui, and all of a sudden, you're in agreement with his plans. If you can trust him for eternity, don't you think you can trust him now? Every head bowed and every eye closed. My friend, I do hope what has been talked about this week will be a blessing to you. I encourage you, stop requiring the GPS of our holy God, if I can put it this way, to recalculate his plan for your life because you keep missing the turns, the exits, the way he wants you to go. Heed the warnings, please. Tomorrow on the broadcast, we're going to continue to talk about why camp. I'm looking forward to speaking to a dear friend and a mentor of mine, and we're going to talk to him for just a few brief moments on why summer camp. It's not too late for some of you. Maybe you have a camp that you could send your young people to a spiritually based, Bible based camp where they're going to get some good preaching, be away from the world. I'd encourage you to do that. I encourage you today, let go and let God have a great day for his glory. We'll plan on talking to you soon. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample booklet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Dwight, Illinois, 60420. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.